see 24 lives being saved. The driver of the accident car is only one of them. There are also three police officers, two members of the ambulance rescue squad, three men from the electric company, and 16 spectators. All will escape serious injury or death because the rescuers know how to play it safe with electricity. Question Ambulance, Detroit Edison, and assistance right away to Jackson and Mason. This knowledge can too. And in the demonstrations which follow, you will see how to protect yourselves and others in emergencies involving electricity. Take a moment to consider electricity itself, a source of enormous power, yet easily controlled. A relatively small copper wire can conduct this dynamic force along a given path. Danger in electricity is not always obvious, though under normal conditions, electricity is a safe and obedient servant, quietly at work about us in a thousand ways. It has revolutionized our lives, influenced our business methods, and become an integral part of science, medicine, our modern world. And yet, like any other great power, it can be misused. And this misuse can result in injury and death. Right now, we'd like you to meet a person whose specialty is misusing electricity. We call him Joe Uninformed, because that's what he is uninformed about electricity. He's learning one of the facts about it now, the hard way. The fact is, if you make yourself part of an electric circuit, you'll get shocked. Fortunately for Joe, it's not serious this time. Next time, it will be. We're going to see a lot of Joe. Joe's accidents are usually due to his lack of knowledge about the facts of electricity. For example, the fact that you do not have to touch an electric wire to be seriously injured. All it may take is contact with something that is touching the wire, like this metal saw. Or a damp wooden ladder. Don't even trust ordinary rubber gloves or boots as they or any other non-approved tool cannot protect you from electricity. Let's go to some typical emergencies where you need to play it safe. Fire Department, Wilson speaking. You say lightning hit a tree, hit a post, and why is it down? Are they near any houses or anything? They are? Well, here's, here's what you do. You stay away from them and keep everyone away from them. We'll have our crew right there. And what location again was what? What do you got, John? Lions down Fort the Wheel. down. 
Though safely put up in accordance with strict codes, wire can be brought down by storms, floods, fires, and other accidents. Whatever the cause, there are three basic steps to follow in handling the emergency. Size up the situation before you do anything else. In other words, look before you leap. Watch out for wires in the area. Be sure there are no dangling wires overhead. Look the ground over carefully also. Uh-oh, Joe isn't bothering, and he'll surely step on a live wire. For these demonstrations, Joe has many lives. But in real life, he'd be out of the picture for good. When you've located all the wires, you are ready to perform step number two. Place a guard and call the electric company. It is no reflection on your own courage or ability to leave that wire where it is. The electric company men are experts. They are trained in the fine points of their job. Let them do it. They have the tools and know-how to do it safely. Remember, too, that a live electric wire may energize other objects which it touches. Wire fences, for example. Now, Joe knows enough not to touch the fence right next to the wire, but how about down there? Yes, the entire length of the fence can be dangerous so long as that wire lies across it. So keep the public away from the fence or any metal object the wire touches. Puddles of water can be dangerous, too, if the wire is in them. But suppose this situation exists when you drive up. Someone is in contact with the wire. You cannot wait for help to arrive. This is where the third step comes in. If you must act, use proper tools and procedures. In this case, the proper tools might include special rubber linesman's gloves in perfect condition, a completely dry rope, a long, dry, well-varnished wooden pole or ladder. Never touch a victim with your hands or anything which will conduct electricity to you until wires are no longer in contact with the victim. Never use sticks or ropes you find lying at the scene because they might be damp and conduct electricity back to you. Once the wire is pulled clear and anchored down, the victim should be given artificial respiration if necessary. Here, they're using the mouth-to-mouth -mouth method. Whatever your own recommended method, use it until a resuscitator can be applied. Let's look at the same situation again. Only this time, the victim is lying on top of the wire. The important thing is to pull him clear as quickly as possible. Again, a non-conducting pike pole or dry rope is used to pull the victim off the wire. While doing this, be sure to hold down the surrounding wire with poles, wooden ladders, or dry hose to keep it from moving or whipping toward rescuers or spectators, and to reduce arcing. Then apply artificial respiration as before. Downed wires sometimes occur in connection with auto accidents, like this one we saw at the very start. The first impulse is to help a victim out. Resist this impulse. It can be deadly. Size up the situation before doing anything. If downed wires touch the car, keep away. Keep others away, too. As far as the victim is concerned, make sure that there are no attempts to leave the vehicle. It could be fatal were the victim to touch the ground while still in contact with the car. Don't get out yet. Stay in the car. Call the electric company for removal of the wires. It may seem a period of waiting, but it's the only way to play it safe. Notice how they do it, using the same kind of dry equipment we saw earlier. The only time you should try this yourself is when the victim is too badly injured to be left in the car. Here's a different situation. This time, the car is on fire, as well as being in contact with the wire. 
If the victim can move, give instructions to leap out. Now be careful now and open the door and don't touch anything on the outside. Okay, now get your Have the victim together. take a long, clean jump, jump, clearing the car without hanging on. Okay, now. This is the only way to leave an energized vehicle with any safety. In emergency calls involving wires down, you've seen some of them, always follow the three steps we saw demonstrated. First, size up the situation before you do anything else. Second, place a guard and call the electric company. Request an ambulance. Detroit Edison. Assistance right away is seen as accident. And third, if you must act, use proper tools and procedures. And jump way out. Okay, now jump. Nearly every fire can create electrical hazard for firefighters, though the origin of the blaze may not be electrical at all. But the safety rules we have just discussed can also save life in firefighting. First, size up the situation to determine what electrical hazards exist. Look for sag or fallen wires outside the burning structure as well as in. Remember that smoke may obscure otherwise obvious hazards. Place a guard and call the electric company to advise them of electrical hazards. Take care as you guide the fire truck into place or put an aerial ladder into position. Keep them well away from fires. The further, the better. There is sometimes a temptation to cut wires right away, but think twice. Instead of eliminating a hazard, it can create a greater one for the whole fire crew, the public, and the utility men. Look, here's Joe going up the ladder to cut a wire. He's using an unsafe instrument, an ordinary tree pruner. A fellow firefighter stands on the wet ground holding the ladder. Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye, fellow crew member on the ground. The electricity ran down the pruners, Joe, the metal ladder, and his friend. Be careful you don't get under these wires here so that they drop down on you. Ben, Bob, we're going to have to cut this drop at the loop. Ben, get the ladder. We'll put it up here, put it on this side. Bob, you get the hot wire cutter. We'll cut that. If in extreme emergency it is absolutely necessary to cut wires, do it here at the service drop, where the wires cannot spring out of control. The cutting should be done with special wire cutting equipment, including a wooden ladder. And where wires are twisted or braided together, they should be cut one wire at a time to avoid hazardous arcing. Here's what can happen if you cut them all at once. Now let's look at the fire itself. Notice that they are not using a regular pressure nozzle to fight it around the wires. Instead, they use a fine fog stream. This is the safest way to fight fires around electrical hazards, since the fine spray does not present a solid path of water. Thus, electricity cannot travel back to the hose handler. If you must use a solid stream, the thing to remember is Keep as far back from the electrical unit as possible. The greater the distance, the less the hazard. Of course, water should never be used in electric motor fires. CO2, or dry chemical type extinguishers, are the most effective means of safely putting out this type of fire. How about fires at installations like an electric substation? Fortunately, fires are a rare occurrence there, and electric companies usually have their own crew to fight them. But it's a good idea to know the hazards in advance. Electric company safety people are always eager to cooperate in acquainting you with their property. They can advise on emergency action for fires in a generating plant or substation. Now let's consider several other emergency situations which come up from time to time in our work. The first is construction equipment accidents. In spite of precautions and warnings by electric companies, sometimes equipment operators will make contact with electric lines. 
because it is difficult to judge clearances from overhead lines, or because he failed to look. When this happens, the entire piece of equipment will be energized. Anyone touching both equipment and ground can be instantly killed. If you are present in such an emergency, remember, first, size up the situation. Second, place a guard and call the electric company. Third, if you must act, use proper tools and procedures. Be sure the victim is away from contact with the charged unit and then apply artificial respiration immediately if needed. ordinary day-to-day -day activity, watch for dangerous practices on construction sites. Do not hesitate to warn the people involved. It may save their lives and save you an emergency run later on. Occasionally, you may get a call for fires in manholes or tunnels which contain electrical equipment. Normally, the only action needed here is to place a guard to keep people away from the possible explosion and call an equipped emergency team. The only reason to enter a manhole under such circumstances would be to save the life of someone who is there. If you do enter a manhole, you should carry self-contained breathing apparatus and a lifeline after a gas analyzer has been used to guard against explosions. And finally, who has not received the call of cat up a tree or utility pole? When you get a situation like this, simply refer it to the electric company. They have men trained for this job. With their special equipment, including insulated rescue poles, they can save the cat without risking their own lives in the process. And what is a feline's injured dignity in comparison to a human life. We have seen how a number of more common electrical emergencies should be handled. In connection with downed wires, in fires, and in other emergencies. Let us once again emphasize the point, use only approved equipment. Do not use makeshift tools like tree pruners, rubber-handled pliers, sticks, or ropes found at the scene. They are not made for dealing with electricity. These tools are. Your local electric company can tell you what to get if you do not own them already. It pays in safety to have them as a regular part of your equipment. This includes special rubber linesman's gloves. Make sure they are in good condition, too. Notice how linemen test their gloves. They look for air leaks through even the minutest holes. If a tiny hole is present, destroy the defective glove. A new pair is an inexpensive investment in protection. Get to know your electric company people and their own emergency facilities. Call on them freely. Never feel you are passing the buck or shirking your duty. They are experts in electricity and want to help. And above all, don't be an uninformed Joe. You won't be if you remember the three rules of safety. One, size up the situation before doing anything at all. Two, place a guard and call the electric company. And three, if you must act, use proper tools and procedures. Do these things and you will protect yourself and others when you meet with an electrical emergency. Thank you.